Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about our No More Nappies Challenge. Basically at the moment you're spending $70 a month in nappies. Each month you waste is another $70 flushed down the toilet literally. So what we're about today is to give you the information so that you can help reduce that spend for a start and I, I guess be informed about what's available to you and, and to make the right decisions. Ignorance is not bliss. It ends up being a situation where your child can still be in nappies at three or four. And if you don't believe me, take a walk down the aisle uh, at, at Coles Woolworths. I did it on Wednesday just to reconfirm what, I, what I'm saying, because I say they're making nappies for five-year-olds. That's the factual evidence right there. But I'm, I was gobsmacked on Wednesday when I went there, they're making nappies for eight to 15 year olds. It's getting pretty scary. And I guess this is the sort of thing we want you to avoid. In this No More Nappies Challenge that we're running through today is your nappy currency. Why we put this together is because it makes it more real for you. Basically, I want you to put this in your wallet, walk around with it for an, for an hour or so and Try not to use it in any of the stands. I don't think they'll accept it. I need the potty training one. But then take it and throw it in the bin. Because that is basically, like I said, what you're doing with your current nappy spend. I wasted seven months with my first $490. So, and it's not only just that, but it's all the, also the angst and everything with regards to our children. And a four or five-year-old still in nappies, they can't, it's not a situation where they'd be happy <laughs> with that situation, especially when they're going to school in nappies. In 2008, they basically had uh, an article in the Courier Mail about the epidemic sweeping Australia with the prep starting schools and the problem of children being sent to school in nappies. So this is what we want to avoid. Just to give you a bit more information with regards to what's happening, I've been seeing this for the last six years and seeing how prevalent it's happening with the three, four, five-year-olds still in nappies. Now there's evidence to back it all up. The University of New South Wales did a research project, published 2010, and they brought out some pretty scary findings. So this, I'm wanting to run through very briefly uh, some of the things that they discovered, and uh, we do have a, a sample bags back at the stand uh, that you can go and grab that information as well um, after this. But basically what they've discovered, that late toilet training is, uh, is over too. We are now doing a toilet training almost a year or more later than what we used to do it in the, in the early 20th century. So basically, this is the challenge. 1920s, we popped them on the potty at three months old because it was inconvenient to keep them in the cloth nappy. We now have disposable nappies, so parents are choosing to start later. When they chose to start at three months, they were day and night trained by 12 to 18 months. Now that we're choosing to start later, they're making nappies for five-year-olds. This is where we've got a question, has something gone terribly wrong? And almost that, that's what the research project opened up with, with the happy five-year-old, four, five-year-old on the nappy packet smiling and basically saying Australia has dismissed toilet training. It's, this is where I guess the challenge lies. The other things they discovered in the, in the article is you can pretty much tick a list of what can go wrong after two years old. And again, like I said, this is what I've been experiencing for the last six years, and now it's actually written. I, um, I did a workshop on Wednesday night, did a survey, and 70% of parents in that room had a poo challenge. Every single one of their children were over two. That's what the research is saying. The evidence is backing it up right there. Basically, after two, you're pretty much guaranteed a poo challenge. What's a poo challenge? I describe it as running away and hiding to poo, wanting the nappy back onto poo, basic toilet refusal. They hold on, become constipated. If they weren't constipated to start with, often that is the end result. So it's not nice. And a two-year-old poo is an adult poo. You don't want to go there, which is another reason to have them toilet trained earlier. And that's what our goal is, to have them toilet trained by two. Because that's what the research established as well. The window of opportunity is your 18 to 24 months. That's the best time to start the process. And I experienced exactly this. What happened in my particular situation with Maya, my first, I did all the wrong things. I waited till two, uh, start, stop, start, stop, poked a stick at it basically. By two and a half, complete toilet refusal. Wheeze and poos actually. 
What happened then is I designed up a system, height of insanity, continue on the same path but expect a different result. I realized that's what I'd been doing for the last seven months. Like I said, $490 also in the bin. Three days later, she was done, racing to go every time. One week later, nighttime trained. So this highlighted as well that toilet training is more about us than anything else. Showing no signs of readiness, which is another reason why a lot of parents delay, because they say, oh, my child's showing no signs, they're not ready yet. But I dismissed that readiness theory with regards to when I changed what I was doing, I got success. So that's the sort of information we want to give you to make sure you, if you do the right things, it can actually work. If you think like a child, if you know your child better, if you understand yourself better, which is what our system teaches um, you, so that you're able to be flexible to, to change it. From there, I started to do more research, and that's why I'm very passionate about giving information to parents. What I discovered in this book here, Early Start Potty Training, Talked about a four-month-old down to one nappy a day. Had a four-month-old, I thought, what have I got to lose? I'm going to do this. Within days, we were catching wheeze on the potty. One month was all it took to get bowel control. Imagine no more pooey nappies since five months old. Seriously, the way to go. I had a mum come just, just the other, um, yesterday at the expo. She'd been starting this process. They're up to the five-month process, um, five months. I said, how are you going? She said, we don't have, have pooey nappies anymore. So it works, doesn't it? Around that five month period, they just don't, they, they let you know they need to go. So this is, I guess, wait, where I guess to give you information so that you can make these informed decisions. Like I said, 1920s, they put them on at three months. Third world countries, toilet train babies. They don't have nappies. So what I wanted to briefly run through is the main challenge that people are having with regards to the poo challenge, just to, because it is such a, a problem area with it, and in general overall with toilet training. But like I said, the poo challenge is summed up is running away and hiding to poo, wanting the nappy back onto poo, toilet refusal for pooing, holding on, that sort of thing. The key, there's two aspects, I guess, the psychological aspect and also the physical aspect. Psychologically, our goal is to refocus, make it fun. The two personality types that tend to get the poo challenge from my observations and analysis is the cautious personality and the more laid back child. And I'll explain why very soon. Basically, the essence of leaving them, the longer we leave them in the nappy, the longer they become dependent on it. Therefore, that's what they know. And that's what they, they don't want to change necessarily. So that's why it tends to get worse as we get older. So with regards to the, the poo challenge, refocus, make it fun. So that's where things like our, our toilet yum yums, magic for the poo challenge. Quick, let's go feed the hungry toilet the yum yum. See here with your wheeze, bomb with your poos. And in our system, we have Dumpy literally bombing the yum yums with his poo poos. Children need to see this. And that helps them familiarization. And we recommend the zoo poo book for it and things like that because it makes it fun. It's that refocus, make it fun to help with the whole process. The physical aspect of it. Things, a couple of suggestions with regards to the whole poo challenge. Uh, a child health nurse suggested this with regards to uh, with the seminar I went to once. It's blowing bubbles while on the toilet. So because what it does is it's working the right muscles to be able to relax and push the poo out as well. Plus, again, refocus, make it fun. So whether it be in a straw, uh, in a cup, that type of thing, or literally the little, little champagne bottle things blow, blowing bubbles on the toilet. How much fun is that? that? That's the goal is to make toilet training fun so that the child is then forgetting about why they're fearful in the first place. So that's two examples that you can help physically with regards to using the right muscles. Sitting on the toilet for pooing is best when leaning forward and leaning elbows on the knees. So with some sort of a stool, um, that type of thing can also help with regards to pushing it out. And the third thing is us relaxing. I don't know how many times I hear parents say to me, once I relax, next day they were done. Because obviously we get start to get stressed about it. As the older our children get, we get more, more stressed and our emotional dis being distraught also is reflected on our children. So we need to relax as well. Because as I said, toilet training is more about us than anything else. So that's the only time I recommend to delay toilet training is if we need a break, N not necessarily with regards to our children. Because we, you get, we can get clever with our children and help them through it. So how do we do that with regards to understanding ourselves and our children? What I wanted to briefly run through is this information from this book here, Personality Plus for Parents. Nothing to do with toilet training, everything to do with 
helping your child through weaknesses and strengths, helping your child to do something that they don't want to do. Often, that happens with toilet training. I, this has helped me so much with my parenting. I've got three children. They're all different. Anyone who has more than one child will realize that. And the four personalities that this book describes, you do the personality profile, work out yours, your partners, your child's, etc. basically enables you to know their weaknesses and strengths to be able to then work with them. So I'm going to briefly run through the four different personality types that this has. The first one is your perfect melancholy. This is my first and very predominantly my second child. The perfect melancholy, they tend to be the geniuses of the world. They're very uh, cautious. So if your child hasn't isn't talking yet, they basically will assess the situation and then proceed. They don't, they like to analyze it. That, that, the, the, per, the perfect melancholy tends to be very quiet. They're always thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, but the problem then is they overanalyze everything which stops them in their tracks. If you have this personality and they've started talking, you'll get the myriad of question upon question upon question. To give you an example, my four-year-old uh, came up to me and said, Mum, when do I start shaving? I said, oh, I don't know, darling, maybe it's something you need to ask Dad about that one. And I said, oh, around 18, something like that. One question is never enough for a melancholy. I said, well, what if I don't realise and end up with a beard? At four, already stressing about shaving. That's what a melancholy does. So basically, the way to work with that personality is information, information, information. They're very routine orientated. If you're this personality, you love your list, your graphs, etc. structure. Do something one way the first time, it has to be done that way every time to a melancholy. They, you move outside of your routine, it completely throws them. So that's how you work with them. The opposite to that personality is your playful sanguine. Now this personality, when you walk into a room, they're usually the brightest, the funnest, the color, col most colorful child there. They're the extroverts. They are the children that, look, all toddlers are like this, but for the, for the playful sanguine, it's all about me. So this personality thrives on attention. They want your attention, they love it. And so basically they do that through their actions, etc. The challenge with that, this personality is as soon as it becomes boring, you've lost them. So it has to be fun. Often they leave a mess in their wake purely because of the fact that they become bored with it and they move on to the next thing. So for this personality, you've got to make it fun, keep it interesting for them. As soon as it becomes hard work, like I said, you've lost them. To punish this personality, you need to remove them from a social setting, put them in time out, go to their room, devastated. Do that to a melancholy and they go, great, get to read my book, do my puzzle in peace. You've got to know your child. That's where it makes a big difference to the process. The third personality type is your powerful cleric. Now this personality is my third child, affectionately known as my annoying thing or hothead. Easiest child to toilet train if you know how. This personality is all about choices. I've been to a seminar before where a psychiatrist said from stage, by the time your child's three, they've established who's in charge, and if they've worked out that it's them, you're in trouble. And this is where the powerful cleric continues to enforce their, their decision-making onto, onto you. But you can't have a two-year-old ruling a household. So I end most of my conversations with my hothead, your, your, my, your choice, darling. But it's my choice. I give him a decision based on any of the choices he makes I'll be happy with. I want a lolly. Do you want an apple or a banana? Your choice, darling. Do you want to use the Wee Man or a Loopy? Your choice, darling. Either way he goes. Do you want to use a Ticket or a Yum Yum? Your choice, darling. So either way, I'm getting what I want. Or choice with consequence. Just to give you an idea also, another thing to work with that personality, they need to win at everything. So I just have to throw in winner, mummy do it, race you to the toilet, anything like that, done. Just the other day, he was, I was having a uh, fighting with him, whatever you want to call it, Clean your teeth, clean your teeth, clean your teeth, and realize, hang on, work with his personality. Quick, Maya, race Jaden to the bathroom and clean his teeth so he gets there first. Gone. Couldn't see him for dust. Argued with him for 10 minutes, one statement, his teeth were done. That's how you know the difference of working with your child. So, and then the fourth personality, the opposite to that, just to give you an idea, sanguines usually marry f melancholies, phlegmatics usually marry clerics. Personality is hereditary, so someone's to blame. So... Basically, we usually blame dad, but unfortunately in my third child, it's my fault. <laughs> but peaceful phlegmatic, easiest child to raise because they're so compliant, hardest child to toilet train, unfortunately. I always give the example with regards to the whole process, it's easy to steer a moving car. Generally, 
which is why working with the cleric and everything. The cleric is, get out of the way, world, I'm coming through. I do it, I do it, I do it. Very independent. The peaceful phlegmatic, they're usually parked. So this is where it's a lot harder to move them because where the emotional state of the melancholy sanguine is up, down, up, down, up, down, and that's just by breakfast. Peaceful phlegmatic is very deadpan. And like I said, very compliant children, very easy to raise, except when you get, want them to do something they don't want to do. Very stubborn. They dig their heels in and you cannot budge them. So the, how you work with that child again is very much, you've got to provide extra motivation in order to get them to go. The challenge with that is, is they don't stay motivated very long. So often I say to parents who've got this personality, it's easier to actually help them move away from pain than reach out for a carrot. So to give you an example, with regards to that, basically, um, in the situation of, of the peaceful phlegmatic, give them something w that involves work. Say, for instance, if we have an accident on the floor, they couldn't be bothered going to the toilet at the moment because they just want to do it in their nappy because they want to play with their toys. Get them to start cleaning up their mess. They realise, actually, going to the toilet's going to be a lot easier. So, therefore, move away from the pain than reaching out for the prize or whatever. So, things like that. So that's just a really brief overview with regards to the whole personality situation. And No More Nappies Challenge uh, is that whole situation of, like I said, converting your $70 nappy currency into one of our boy-girl early. We've made it easy. You don't have to think about it. Just have to make a decision. Have I got a boy or a girl? And basically, we'll get the job done for you, guaranteed. So come and see me at the, the stand uh, if you have any other questions. I'll be able to tell you how boys are so much easier to toilet train than girls um, using things like the Wee Man uh, because you can't demonstrate with girls, but with boys you can. Wee Wee's like Daddy. It's the best way to go. You should see Daddy's eyes light up when, when I tell them they've got to make the yum yum spin around in the Wee Man. <laughs> it's very much, and Wee Targets, hit the spot maker picture, we recommend for small and tall. So it's got to make it fun. Thank you very much for today and uh, our stand over at F34 will come and answer your questions and help you toilet train your children. Thank you. Mm -hmm.